Well, today I'm just going to start off by saying happy, 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 happy. How's that? <laughs> I was trying to think of each day what I should start off by saying, and I just think today should just be happy, happy, happy day. But we're going to be talking about faith today, and it's another discipleship empowerment tip, and we look forward to getting into God's Word. And this time we're going to look at faith and faithful and faithfulness from the point of view of the gospel. Of course, you know the gospels are speaking and teaching about the testimony of Jesus Christ from the view of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So today we're going to look at those four books in the light of Jesus Christ on his teaching concerning faith, faithful, and faithfulness, and how he is going to explain it to us in a variety of different ways. One of the things I noticed as I was studying today is that when you look at the Gospels, one of the major things that Jesus is trying to do and it's interesting, he's trying to get the disciples and the people to have more faith. Now, I, don't, I know there needs to be a balance when it comes to this word faith, and I even wrote that in my notes, how important it is to have a balance when it comes to the words of God. Because we need to balance the Old Testament with the New Testament. We need to balance what the Holy Spirit has th said throughout the Bible. That's important. And some doctrines over the years have kind of the balance scale has gone to one side and then then it flips over to the other side and then there's more of it or less of it or whatever. But we need to find the balance when it comes to words and to the doctrines that they may build. And of course the doctrine of faith has been around for a long time and it's kind of like a pendulum, it swings back and forth. But it's interesting when you look at the Gospels, the Gospels... If you would boil them all down, it seems that it comes across that Jesus is trying to get the disciples and the people around them to have more faith. You know, I think we could use more faith. I know there are some that try to say all kinds of things in the name of the word faith. But the thing is, I think in general, all of us could use more faith in Jesus Christ to trust him for greater and greater things. Because I believe the pilgrimage, the journey that we're on, is a journey of faith. But it's a journey where it's just like a seed. The seed starts off and our faith is small. Then as we get older, our faith gets a little larger. And as we get a little bit more mature, our faith gets a little bit more stronger. And we start believing in God as we get older and travel a long life journey where we have greater faith to pray for things that you never thought you would pray for. I have prayed for the sick. I prayed for healing. I prayed for the blind. I have even prayed for the raising of the dead. And I've seen it happen, I believe, once. But it took a while for my faith to get to that place, to trust that I believe that when we act out and we live out with the words of Jesus Christ, he then empowers his words to be able to be used for his glory. Amen? So when we talk about this idea of faith when it comes to Jesus Christ, there's a lot of things he's going to say about faith. And there's... We can't get to all the scriptures, but we're going to try to get to some of them tonight. And our first one is found in Matthew 6, verse 30. And it's, and it's in the story or the teaching, you could sort of say, when it comes to this whole area, don't worry. I don't know about you, sometimes it's easy to be, what we say in English, a worry war. Where we just worry, 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 worry. And Jesus tries to tell them, what the problem is, disciples, is not to focus on worry, but start to focus on having faith in me, that together we can do things. And so he says, now if so, now God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. See, again, we're going to talk all tonight where Jesus is going to keep pointing at the disciples, keep pointing at the people and say, what's the problem here? Why can't you have faith in God? Why can't you believe that God is going to keep his commandments? He's going to keep his words. He's going to do what he says he will do. He is trustworthy as we talked last night. Then over in Matthew chapter 8, he goes on here. As surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And it's interesting that this is the centurion who sent his servant because his child was ill. Now again, he's not even of the Jewish background, but he has faith and he's heard about Jesus Christ. He's heard about the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he sends a servant down. And of course, as he sends him down and he tells Jesus, 
well, you know, go back and uh, I'll come with you. And Jesus said, the centurion says, no, you're not worthy to come to me, but just speak the word. And Jesus said, well, what do you mean? Well, he says, well, I'm a man of authority. I have other soldiers under me. When I tell them to go this way, they go that way. When I tell them to do this, they do that. And, he's, and he said, you know, I know, Jesus, you're under authority. And so I believe that if you just speak it right now, it will happen. And that's when Jesus turned around and said, I've never met anyone, even in the Jewish people, that have had such a faith as this one. And as their faith has believed, he says to him, so be it. And of course, there was a healing that took place. Then we move over into Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. And you're going to see Matthew talks a lot about faith. It's interesting when we look in the scriptures. Let me tell you a little tidbit about faith. It's found a lot in Matthew. It's only found a few times in Mark. It's found, found about another five to eight times in Luke. But you know what? It's not found at all in John. You don't find the word faith or faithfulness, at least not in the older translations that may have been translated a little bit differently in some of the newer ones, but it's not there. But I believe that Matthew, because he moved from being a tax gatherer to having to walk with the Lord and trust in the Lord, he began to get a deeper understanding of the importance of faith. So in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, the disciples, you know, they're out in a boat. Uh, Jesus is resting in the back of the boat. The boat is being covered over by waves. Lots of things happening. The disciples are freaking out. They can't decide whether they should wake up Jesus or not. Because they believe the boat's going to go down and they don't want Jesus to drown while he's sleeping. Not that that would ever happen, but that's the way they were thinking. And so one of them got brave enough to go back and talk to Jesus and wake him up. And Jesus stands up. Of course, he rebukes the winds and the waves. But then he says to them, he says to them, why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? And again, he's pointing this at the 12. What is your problem with your faith? What has caused you to have some of the challenges that you have? And I know sometimes my dear wife, Colwyn, will ask me that a little bit too, you know. How come you have faith for this, this, and this, and sometimes not for this, this, and this? Well, maybe because I haven't grown in that area or haven't experienced that, that area. But I can tell you, over the last year or two, maybe as much as 10 years, my faith has been stretched and has grown and that little seed that was planted years ago has become one of those eight or nine foot tall mustard seed trees. And uh, I've seen tremendous things that go on. But the disciples needed to grow in their faith. Then in Matthew chapter 9 verse 2, Jesus heals the paralytic. And we see in verse 2 it says, Now behold, he, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Now, because he said it that particular way, of course, the Pharisees and Sadducees were, who were in that room weren't amazed about the miracle. They got all upset about how he spoke it. He says, Well, who are you to be able to say your sins are forgiven? Well, you know, the reason he could say that because he was God himself. And he had the faith to believe, and he told him that he told those people that brought him in, and the man that was brought with them on a cot or a, a, a hammock, as you could white may call it, he was healed and set free that day. Then again, it's interesting how how Jesus is pointing out to the disciples and to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes what faith is all about, because he talks about here. You know, centurion, how son was healed. Now he talks about the paralytic who was healed. Then Matthew goes over in Matthew chapter 9, verse 22, and talks about the woman who had an issue of blood for many, many years, and how and Jesus says this in 22, but Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, and said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that day. See, her faith was is that she just believed that if she could just get to God, get to Jesus Christ, just even touch the hem of his garment, just even touch a little bit of who he is, that she could be healed. And sometimes that's where we need to press in. And the scriptures are going to tell us that we need to press in more and more in faith. 
you know, sometimes we give up on faith too easy. We go and we try it once and then we say, well, that didn't work and throw it out. You know, I don't know if you've ever tried to make bread or make any particular type of meal. You may try it two or three or four or five times before you get it down to what it's really like and how it should be tasting and how it is good to eat. And it's the same thing. Faith is a process. A process, I believe, of growing and maturing in the Lord. And we need to believe that and we need to allow it to take place. You know, sometimes I've had in my younger years where I've laid hands on and prayed for people and nothing happened. But in later years, as I kept being faithful and doing it and anointing people with oil, you know, I don't understand why some get healed and some don't. But the scripture tells me I'm just supposed to be faithful and anointing them with oil. So I'm faithful. I pray for the sick. They call upon the elders, I pray for them. People call upon to be delivered, I pray for them. I pray for them. Why? Because I believe that it's not through my strength and power, but it's through the strength and power of Jesus Christ. And I have faith in Him. Now, all I have to be concerned about is according to His will. What does He want to do? And how does He want to do it? And so, you'll see throughout the Scriptures, many times Matthew points out, about how they needed to have faith. Again, over in Matthew chapter 14, verse 31, we got Jesus walking on water. <laughs> I, I, I hope we have instant replay in heaven because I, I would love to see that one. I would love to see the disciples all in the boat, you know, rowing away, trying to get this boat across. They're tired. They've had a long day at the office. And now, you know, Jesus, he had kind of cleaned up everything, finished up everything on the shore. He didn't go with them. And then he got into the, uh, got walking on the water, and he headed across the water. And of course, you know Peter. Peter is that kind of guy with enthusiasm, and sometimes he speaks faster than he thinks. And and he says, you know, Lord, uh, I I want to come walk on water too. And Jesus, I think he was startled. And Jesus said, Sure, come, just come. And so what Peter did, he kind of began to get out of the boat. And I don't know about you, what your faith would be like. I think I would be touching the water with my foot first, seeing if it was actually firm enough to stand on, and then finally stand in it, and then begin to walk. But then as the Bible says, as he began to walk, he saw the winds and the waves. He got his eyes off of Jesus and got his eyes on the circumstances. And of course, he began to sink. And so in Matthew 13 or Matthew 14, verse 31, it says, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And again, this is another time with the disciples. You know why? Because there was a time coming that after Jesus was going to be resurrected and ascended into heaven, where the disciples were going to need more faith. Not just faith in the physical body, but they were going to now have to have spiritual faith to be able to fulfill the great commissions and the commands of God. Then again in Matthew 15, 28, we have this story of a Gentile woman who is talking to Jesus and talking about how, you know, he should, uh, how that she, he could help her. And, and they got into discussion about, you know, Gentiles versus non-Gentiles. And, you know, and she was asking for a miracle. And Jesus was saying, well, I'm sorry, I'm only, I came here for the Jews, not for the Gentiles. And then she turned around to him, and, and they got into this discussion, you know, about the crumbs on the table. And then, and, uh, then even, even she said, even, even the dogs get the crumbs that fall off the table. And so she was saying to them, saying to Jesus and to the disciples that are around about, you know, even a few crumbs, when done in the name of faith, will produce great miracles. And she, it says in chapter 15, verse 28, Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, o woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. That she was now going to be touched by God and, and be ministered to. Again, we, we keep going on in Matthew. Matthew is trying to hammer home this point concerning faith. And then we come into the Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will so say to that mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But he says to them one line further, which we need to read, because that's where the balancing comes in. However, 
this kind, talking about the spirits, evil spirits, does not come out except through prayer and fasting. So there was exceptions to the rule of faith. And we see that when we're going to study in the next couple of nights from Hebrews about the, the, the heroes of faith. There were certain things that happened to certain people of faith and there were certain things that happened to other people of faith. But they were both people of faith. Sometimes people like to point fingers at other people and say, you don't have faith. No, you need to be careful because some things take more prayer and they take fasting and they take time. And that's why sowing and reaping is so important. But there is also a nurturing in between. You just don't sow and then come back at the harvest time. There's a nurturing that goes on in between. And God wants us, yes, to sow faith. And he wants us to reap faith. But there may be one month, two months, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years before the faith. I believe that my earthly father was going to get saved. I wasn't sure how it was going to happen. But after 30 years, it happened. God answered that prayer. But according to his timing, according to when he wanted to bring in the harvest, not when I wanted to bring it in, and that's something we need to learn. That's why I said keep it in balance to the scriptures. The scriptures are balanced there to show us. And he said to him that, yes, you will be able to move mountains. Yes, you will be able to do certain things in my authority and my power. But also certain things are going to need prayer and fasting. Then over in Matthew 21, 21, again, it talks about, again, they're just walking around. And Jesus just keeps pointing out to them, Things that they need to have faith in. I mean, a few days before, they were walking by this fig tree, and it and it didn't have any figs around it. And so, I don't know why Jesus did what he did, but he cursed it, and it, and it just withered up. And then the next day, they walked by it again. And as they were walking by, it says, So Jesus answered, because the disciples saw it. Wasn't that that tree that you had talked to? And, and look what happened to it. And Jesus said to them in verse 21, As surely I say to you, if you have faith, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be ye removed and cast in the sea, and it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Again, some amazing testimonies. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Well, we got the scribes and the Pharisees always at Jesus' feet, always hounding him, trying to get him to do things and possibly say something wrong. But Jesus was a man of faith, and he wanted them to be people of faith too. He didn't want them to be people of religion. That's what they were. Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes, all of them were religious. They followed the letter of the law to the detail. But Jesus didn't want them to follow the letter of the law. He wanted their hearts to follow after God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. And so Jesus, a little hard on him here, he says in verse 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and you uh, anise and cooning and have neglected the weighter matters of the law. What does the waiter matter? Justice and mercy and faith. You have forgot the justice of God. You have forgotten the mercies of God and the faith of God. And these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. This is what Jesus wanted. He wanted a change from the inside out. He wanted them to have faith, to believe that from the inside things were going to be able to come out. And then again, we're still in Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. We got the teaching on the faithful servant. It says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant who is his master made ruler over his household to give the food in due season? Blessed is that servant who his master, when he comes and will find so doing. As surely I say to you that he, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. And it goes on and teaches how important it is when a master can trust his servant because his servant is faithful. You know, we could use a lot more faithfulness in the body of Christ, in the disciples of Christ. 
Oh, we want faithfulness to be shown to us. But I believe we also need to show faithfulness to others. We need to be planters of faithfulness. Amen. And we need to be planting it not only for ourselves, but we need to be planting it into the heart of others. And as we do that, I believe God will do powerful things. Then in Matthew 25, 21, we got the parable of the talents. Remember the teaching on the talents when they were going out, there was three of them and they were uh, being challenged. God had given them talents or the or their Lord or master had given them talents and, and two of them reinvested and another one, all he could do is dig a hole in the ground and bury it and hold on to it for himself. You know, I know an awful lot of Christians like that. You know, I, I believe that I've been able to experience the blessings of God because I didn't take that talent which God gave to me and put it in a hole in the ground and bury it and wait till the Lord comes back and then be able to dangle it in his face and say, oh, I still got it, I still got it. And then God's going to say to me, but, but you didn't use it. Why didn't you use what I gave to you? You know, well, I'm not perfect. I'm not this. I'm not good at speaking. I'm not good at writing. I'm, 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 I'm. That's what we're always like, full of excuses. God didn't ask for excuses. He said, I've entrusted you with something. I had faith in you. You should have faith in me. That if I have entrusted you with those talents, I could know that I could come back and receive back. And so what he did, he took away the one from the one person he had and gave it to the others. And then he casted him out, the one in the outer darkness. Why? Just because he wouldn't have the faith. Jesus said, why didn't you just even give it to the users and to the bankers? At least you could have got something for it. And he said, well, no, 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 no. I'm fearful of you. You see, that's the problem. Sometimes we have more fear than we have faith. We have fear of what people are going to say. I used to take people to go with me door to door to do street evangelism and to go and house to house and, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were terrified terrified you could go to a church of a hundred and ask people to come and you might get six or seven people signed up because they were terrified of fear what was going to happen behind the door <laughs> you know what the people might say or the people might do they were fearful of being rejected don't be fearful of being rejected because our fear doesn't our faith doesn't come from people it comes from god amen so take that which god gives you and use it for his glory. Well, we're going to skip over to Mark for a couple of minutes. Our time is going by quickly, but I want to just go into Mark chapter 4, verse 40. And again, uh, it just reminds us of how they were the winds and the waves and how they were fearful. And again, when we go through Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke, there is a lot of similar scriptures and, and, and teachings of Jesus concerning uh, what what the Lord had done in their midst. In Mark chapter 10, verse uh, 52, he says, Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. You know, I think we could just continue on for over an hour <laughs> on this whole idea of faith. But I want to skip over to just a few more verses before our time is up concerning this word faith in the gospel. Now, I mean, you could take more time and go back and study these words, faith, faithful, and faithfulness. But again, it's important that we get it into our lives. And I think that's what Jesus was saying with the majority. Yes, there will be the few people out there that they, you know, they will try to cast the mountain into the sea. They got that kind of faith. But there's a, lot, a whole lot of other people that just don't have faith to even to go out the door in the morning and share their faith. And so in 16.10 of, of uh, Luke, Jesus said to the, them, and again 16.10, he said, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is just unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. You know, I've taught this a little bit over and over again. You know what the problem with so many people are? They aren't faithful in the little things. You know, when God tells you to go take a plate of cookie to someone in the house, or go take a meal to someone in the house, or go take $5 to that person, or go pick up the mail for them, or go do something, we say, oh, it's too small, or it's too below me. No, you, you, faith has to start with the little things. 
you know, faith has to start that you go and you make the plate of cookies and God spoke to you to go next door to that certain person and give it to them and you'd be amazed what God will do with that. People sometimes will say to me, you know, I'll say to them, you know, you need to be faithful in little things. And they'll say, well, I have been. I said, yeah, but you haven't been baptized yet. Well, I'm not spiritually good enough. No, that's a little thing. That's only a little thing that God has asked you to do. And if you can't be faithful in getting into waters of baptism, God's not going to trust you with other things. I know that's a strong word tonight, but that is true. I have learned that those who are faithful in the little things, God entrusts them even with greater things. That's a principle of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is watching. Are we going to be faithful with the little things? And I've seen that in my own life, year after year, how God has asked me to do things. And I've complained, and I've murmured, and I've given him a hard time, and i said, no way, no way. And God just kept pressuring, pressuring, and I, and I finally say, okay, I'll do it. And then when it doesn't work out, it's like I like to say to the Lord, see, I told you so. You know, it's impossible. I had that happen one time. I, gave, I want to give a quick testimony here. We had a, a school bus that we had built into a Sunday school on wheels. I had a vision about taking that bus out and taking it to parks during the summertime and, and, and opening the back door. We, we put a, an organ in it and a puppet booth and curtains on it and painted it red and white and called it the fountain. And people came in from all over, from parks and everything, and come in and, and I would you know share the message with them and they would get saved. But one day there was an accident. Terrible accident where that bus got hit by the, uh, a high-speed car down the side. Almost killed me, but God helped me in there at the time. Tore the axles out of the back of the, the van. That's how uh, the bus, that's how big it, the accident was. And we had to get a tow truck and bring it back. And we parked it in our laneway, and it was there. And I didn't know what to do. Now it's a piece of junk. What do you do with it? It's all smashed up. And I was out shoveling snow on the laneway one day, and the Lord said to me, I want to I want to challenge you in your faith. And I says, what's that? I said, he said, go in the house, get the keys to the bus, and go out and start the bus. And if it starts, then you know I wanted you to fix it and put it back on the road again. And I said to him, Lord, that bus engine was all smashed up. It's the middle of wintertime. It's not been plugged in. The, the battery is dead, and so forth and so on. But he kept hounding me. And so I finally went in and got the keys. And, and Irene said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm just, I me and the Lord are having this thing out right now. So I got into the bus. And I put the keys back in. And I turned the ignition and went click, click. That's it. So I got up and I began to walk out. I said, see, Lord, I told you it wasn't going to work. And then he said to me, he said, sit back down and turn that key again. And I'm going to show you who I am. And I got back down and I sat in that seat and turned that key and that engine fired up just like it had been running for, for years and years. And then I went out and opened the hood and the engine was completely packed with winter snow. You couldn't even see the engine. So I started calling up friends on the phone. I said, you got to come over and see this. This crazy bus is running. But it took some faith. And boy, that day, faith was built in my heart to be faithful in the little things and believe God in the greater things. 17 verse 5 he says, And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. I think that's really where it's all at. I think that's where we need to get to the place where we ask the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. And I believe that you need to be careful how you pray that because it's not a prayer where you pray the prayer of faith and you sit back and say, okay, Lord, you do what you want to do and I'm going to cheer you on. Go, Jesus, go. Go, Jesus, go. No, no, to increase your faith is having to put you into situations, into trials and challenges that's going to cause you to be stretched in your faith. And I believe that's when we begin to grow and to nurture. And I think like the apostles, all oh, they've asked, oh Lord, we see what you're doing. We see your power and your anointing. We see how you are trying to teach us about faith. Oh Lord, we're praying right now. Increase, increase our faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come today with that prayer in our hearts. 
And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would increase our faith. Lord, as you take us along the life's journey, that we will walk in balance when it comes to the idea of faith. And Lord, that we will be balanced with your word of God, with the word that you have given to us. But Father, we are praying that you will increase our faith tonight. Lord, that whatever it may be, whatever I believe, I believe, Lord, you're speaking to everyone tonight to step out in some little way when it comes to faith. Some little way that you're saying to them, do this. And when they do that, Lord, that's the next open door to the next step of faith, to the next one after that and the next one after that. Lord, we're to be pilgrims of faith walkers. And so, Father, help us to walk out our faith in you tonight, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We're going to talk about faith tomorrow, but tomorrow we're going to look at it from the book of Acts. Through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Thank you again for joining us, and may you have a great walk of faith today. Amen. And you know what? We love you in Jesus. God bless you.